We talked about, uh, first of all, happy Valentine's for whoever's caring. <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyways, happy Valentine's Day. Um, uh, we're going to go through the string we have done last time. And then after that, we're going to talk about classes and resources and uh, understand exactly how they work. Uh, and I see that the population of the class is, uh, is dropping. Um, usually, that's the side effect of posting recorded video, but some people don't find it interesting to come to class because they're going to be targeted by me asking questions when they're sitting at home watching the video. Nobody's asking anything, so it's less um, frightening, I guess. But uh, anyways, so um, let's talk about what, we've, what we did. We created a class to, to replace the, the string array that we had in C language. So we want those null terminating stuff that is happening in an array treating as uh, a character or as a string to work with it. We want to remove it and we want to create actually an object that does all those things behind the scene for me and it acts like a regular variable. To do something like that, we created a string that had a uh, length and it had uh, a character pointed and pointed uh, to the, the data to, in which we are going to keep our null terminated, null terminated character array behind the scene. We create a constructor that defaulted to null to, to keep the string in a safe empty state when it's with a no argument constructor. And when, it, when there is a one argument constructor, we received a string and we set up our uh, uh, string class with the C string that we are receiving. We create the destructor to deallocate the, the memory. Looking at the code makes it more clear. And uh, we overloaded the type conversion co operator for Boolean to uh, give the message back to whoever wants it to know if the string is empty or not. So if the string is placed in a situation where it's supposed to represent a condition, a, a truth or falsehood, automatically it's going to be converted to its status of being empty or not. So if it's empty, it's falsehood. If it's uh, 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 not empty, truth is the case. We created an accessor called length to, to, to uh, return the length of the string if ever needed. Uh, the first request was to create uh, the string compare, uh, sorry, string concatenation, so we concatenate two strings with the operator plus equal with which we created, for which we created the uh, operator plus equal oper uh, overload over here, receiving another string, not a C string, another string uh, uh, allocating enough for the length of, the combined length of the left that is the owner and the right that is the incoming right uh, um, operator, for example, over here, name plus equal last name, something like that. And then uh, we uh, made sure that uh, what we have currently is actually something. So if we actually have something in our left side of the string, we copied the, uh, the uh, current information into the temporary allocated uh, part of the memory. But uh, in the other class, I did that and it helped a lot. So I'm going to do it over here too. This is not a temporary memory. It's, it's essentially, uh, I'm going to set it to the current block and I'm going to say this is new uh, M data. So let's call it that, like that. So, so the pointer we create over here is actually new M data. Uh, the M data of that is going to be the result of the concatenation of the right, uh, uh, right operand and the left operand. So what we have done over here was to allocate enough memory that can fit both, uh, getting the length of left and right. Then we check to see if I have anything. I will copy it into the new data. If not, I'm going to make the new data blank because that's what it's supposed to be. And then I concatenate the data of the right one into what I have here. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, but uh, something's missing over here. Oh, I am actually testing that, so there is no problem with that. <clears throat> Sorry. 
So I am testing that to see if the, uh, the string at, at line 23, that string is actually have, does, does have something. If it doesn't, then the concatenation is irrelevant. So uh, I copy the data, uh, I concatenate the data of the right operand into the data of the left operand, <clears throat> then update the length, get rid of the old data, and make the old pointer to point to the new data, and therefore it's, it's accomplished, and I have the, the, uh, the concatenated result, and we uh, tested it over here, uh, put it in test one, so I create a name Fred and a last name Soleil, then we did the plus equal, and Fred Soleil with no space between got created, so concatenation was successful. Obviously, we created a display over here, as uh, you remember, to actually display the data if there is anything in it, and we overloaded the helper operator so it can be printed by C out, and that's what's happening at line eight. But then I wrote this example, and I, and I wrote it like this, and I said, uh, I'm because to have a space between the two, so I want to have Fred space Soleil. I, concat I will concatenate an empty string over here, C string. And apparently it worked. So when I actually run the pro uh, program, um, as we will see now, when it runs, name has Fardad in it, Fred in it, or Fred Soli. Fred in it. And when I do plus equal, actually that Fred is Fred space now. And when I concatenate the second one, now it becomes Fred space Soleil. How did that happen? I did not overload a constant character pointer at right, right, right hand side operator. The only thing, uh, a C string per se. How did it work? How is it possible that without any type of overloading, it actually worked? Casting. casting. So what is casting? So we know that if you put something in an operation that C doesn't have the resources to deal with it, it tries to see if it can make it to something that it has resources for. It has the left side as a string, right side as a constant character pointer. It says, I have a plus equal that belongs to name. Does that plus equal accept a C string? The answer is no. Look at line 22. No, it doesn't accept a C string. But can I turn a C string to a string? Do I have the tools for it? What is a tool of building an object out of, out of a data? It's called a constructor. With a constructor, you build an object out of a data. Like you have a student, you make a student out of an integer as its student number. So you say the constructor of student receives a student number, and you build a student out of it. It's the same thing over here. I can build a string out of a constant character pointer. Why? Because I have the tool for it. The string constructor receives a constant character pointer. Therefore, it is castable. So cast in C++ happens in two different ways. Either it is a conversion operator that you create yourself, so if this thing is casted to that, do this, or C++ has the tools to build up an object out of that value, which means that object should have a constructor accepting that value. So does st regular string, that will be the string class, have a constructor that receives a constant character pointer? Yes, therefore it creates a temporary Therefore, it creates a temporary, const a temporary string out of this one and passes the reference of that one instead. Therefore, therefore, here R will be the reference of a nameless object, a temporary object that was created so it can fit. And we'll demonstrate, it, we'll demonstrate that in a second. Um, how? So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to create, uh, add uh, uh, a new header file. And I'm going to call that header file debug.h. And in debug.h, obviously, I'm going to say, if not, define uh, sdds debug 
H and oh <laughs> define e fine and then in here I'm gonna say uh, define SDDS debug or yeah, let's make it bigger SDDS debug what am I doing I'm using the same technique for uh, safeguards for compilation so I'm saying I am defining SDDS debug then what do I do I am going to add my debugging statements within the surround it with a with a, a definition so in here I want to print a, a uh, uh, I want to print, uh, what should we call it, uh, a debugging message. So in here, I'm going to say, if defined SDDS debug, then in here, I'm going to say C log. What do I print? I print creating string out of out of, uh, and I'm going to go to new line, and in here I'm going to say uh, if C string is not null, show the C string. If it is, uh, if it is, print nothing. Okay, uh, which means that my log, if that thing is null, it's going to print nothing. If it is not null, it's going to actually print what string is being built out of. So that becomes a con that becomes a debugging message that's going to get displayed. And obviously, as you see, it is dimmed now, which means it doesn't exist because not an SDS debug is not defined over here. But as soon as I include the debug over here, now that is active. Okay. So either I can include and uninclude debug, or I can comment the debug in my debug header file, and all the messages will disappear and appear um, if I want to. Okay? So I'm going to do the same thing. And when I'm going to go in a destructor, and I'm going to say over here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So this is going to be my debug statement for destructor. And in the destructor, I'm going to say uh, killing string containing in here is going to be m data and in here it's going to be m data okay so so it's going to be killing string if it's m data exists it's going to show what it is and so on and so forth now I'm going to run my program and see how many objects are created so at any moment an object gets created it's going to show me what is getting created, right? I'm going to, I'm going to first um, uh, comment this and run it so we recall what the output is without any debugging statement. So this is what I'm going to get, right? It's because it's essentially doing this, right? So it's actually saying uh, this is named Fred and last name is Soleil, add a, add a space, then uh, add the last name, then print the name, therefore Fred space Soleil is printed. Simple. But now I want to see what's happening behind the scene. I'll remove the debug to see how many object creations are happening. And when I run the program, this is the outcome. Oh, one more thing. Sorry. Because Sometimes you have invisible spa white space. You want to be able to see it, right? So let's put something that shows where it begins and where it ends. So I'm going to do it like this and print it like that. Save it. Run it one more time. Now the outcome is at the moment this. Now take a look. Let's walk through. Okay, so the very first thing, creating fret. As you see, it's, it creates a string out of fret. That's line number 12, first statement. Then it creates a string out of soleil. That's that one. I've never created the string out of space, but it's doing it automatically. And that's the nameless that it's getting created. 
in here, it is building a nameless string out of that space to be able to pass it to plus equal. So that is created. And immediately after the job is done inside the function at line 13, it kills it because it's not used, it's, it's not being used anymore. Nameless objects are doomed to die as soon as they are, their, their usage is over. And because it's a temporary nameless created at line 13, it dies at the end of line 13. Essentially, line 13 is the scope of that nameless. Got it? Okay, and that, ladies and gents, is what we see in here. Then Fred Soleil is printed, and then it killing string containing Soleil, and then Fred Soleil. Um, I always mention this um, in my classes, and I'm, and I'm going to mention it now, uh, that constructors are dying always in reverse order. What does it mean? Is that I'm, I'm, I'm building a marker, a black marker. Then I'm building a red marker. Then I'm building a green marker. So this is first, second, third. If I want to destroy, which one gets destroyed first? The last one, green and red, and finally. So it's always like that. When you create automatic variables, automatic variables always die in reverse order. The reason for it, you'll find that in OP345 when you understand what a stack is. Okay, so it essentially dies in reverse order, unless you do it dynamically. If you do dynamically, then when you delete, that's when they die. Okay, because that's in your hands. You created them, you are deleting them. If you are doing it automatically, it always, get, it always dies in reverse order. So that's that. And that was uh, the end of what we have done last time, and we are going to continue it today. Continue uh, talking about a few things today, and then... Uh, uh, We'll see what's going to happen. Okay, we're going to talk about first uh, classes with resources. Uh, and then after that, we're going to talk about files. How to read and write from files, from an into, uh, from an into uh, read from files and write into files using CN and CLT. Yes. Not at all. At, not at all. It takes around three to five minutes to teach files. And that's... Uh, Glory of object orientation. I'll explain why. Okay? If you learn to drive a car and they give you a new car, can you drive it? How? Because you already know how to drive a car, right? Uh, and that's how we're going to do uh, the file thing. You'll know when we, take to, when we get to it. Okay? All right. It is uh, very much simpler than you can. That you, I, I told you, it takes about three to five minutes to teach you how to do I.O. Normal, like uh, basic I.O. We are not doing crazy stuff yet. Baby steps to read and write from text files. That's what I'm going to teach. And then in three, four, five, you're going to learn to do um, crazy stuff. Not now. Okay, so. Now that we have done this, so let's put this one over here, and I'm going to say, uh, A, I'm going to say automatic casting temp objects dot CPP. Obviously, it is always prepared for these things not to happen, which means if I am writing the program, if I am writing the thing, it's better for me not to let that expensive thing happen, which is creating a temporary nameless object. If you are intent to do plus equal, make sure that you do for both cases. So we have constant character um, C string and Because they're very similar, I'm just copying it. Constant character C string, right? And character pointer C string. And in here, I am saying U dot str len of C string, correct? And then I'm going to say if this is the case. Uh, do that, and we are doing, and in here I'm saying if C string, C string, C string, do that, 
And then in here, we are saying SDR cat from C string into M data, C SDR into M data. Length is equal to U. It's a very bad, again, first I write it. First I write it and make it work. Then I write it proper way. Okay, C string. And delete data, done. So now I have them both. So no temporary object will get created. It's just going to do it the way it's supposed to be done. As you see, these two are identical logics, correct? These two are identical logics, correct? So put it in a function. Okay? Put it in a function and recall the function. That's your job. Make this a private thing. Call it concat, whatever you're calling it. And call that function instead of having the thing over and over. Of course, uh, this logic is much faster than this logic. Can anybody tell me why? The logic of copying another string is faster than copying. So can you see that at the end of the class? Can you see that at the end of the class? OK. So this logic is faster than this one. Can anybody tell me why? You're at the right track, but that's not the right answer. You're at the right track. That's the reason, but why? Why utility is slower than that one? Let's put it that way. He's right. I am actually using the utility header file. And this one I'm calling a member function of the class for the length. So why this is faster than that one? No, the object is created in a header file. It doesn't create. It's there anyway, and I'm using it. The reason is that that is storing a length in an integer. This one is looping through a string to find out what is the length. This one is an instant answer. Because it knows what the length is, it tells you. This one goes through a process, a loop from the beginning of the string to the end until it hits the null. And that's what's the length. So this one is slower than that one. This is a loop. That's just an integer value being returned. OK? So yeah. So again, for our case, it might not be much of a difference. But if the concatenation is happening with a text that is, I don't know, a gigabyte of text, then that's going to be different, <laughs> OK? But again, uh, you need to see what is the preferable uh, way of doing it. So yeah, anyways. Um, with the speed of computers these days, you, you just put this one over there and you pass. So essentially, you make this a function, and you pass the data of the string to the function, and it copies it. Um, you'll see. Anyways, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, any questions down to this point? So if I, just, uh, just, if I might just run this and show you what the difference is going to be. Like the, the other one, if you remember, we had that nameless thingy got cr getting created. But now if you look at it, there is no nameless anymore. It worked the exact same way, but there is no nameless. Why there is no nameless is that because when it actually gets to here, it calls the function that is for it. So no object is created. It just uses that, therefore, it's much, much less expensive in resources and everything. No temporary object is created. No dynamic memory allocation is happening. Nothing. Nothing extra is happening other than what it should. Anyways, that's that. So sadly, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So. You will not see that outcome again because we created this in a string, so you cannot compile and run and see actually temporary nameless is being called. So remember, if you want to see that happen, you have to comment out the operator plus equal. Okay? Are we okay with this? You okay?
another way later. Okay. Uh, uh, somebody added a couple of functions for string and sent it to me to Teams. Is that person here? Well, who's the mystery person? I have to, I have to go to see what the name I'm very bad with names, you know that. So uh, I, I, I know that somebody did it. I didn't have time to go through it and see if it's good to add it. But as I mentioned, if you added any features, you let me know, you send it to me, and I will add it under your name to the string. So I'm going to say this function is written by this person, and it adds contributed to the string for it to work. Anyway, so the next thing we want to do over here is uh, 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 to actually read a string, okay? Before uh, I go to the classes with resources, I want, I'm writing a string on a, on a, on the, uh, uh, with C out, but I'm not reading it with C in. So how do I do that? So to read the string uh, with C in, to read the string with C in, what I need to do is to add a read function. And the, the read function is almost identical to display, but it's the, uh, the iStream version of it. So essentially, it's the same thing. Instead of OStream, I have iStream in here. And obviously, this is read, not display. So this is read. And I have iStream, ISDR being equal to CN. And obviously, it's not a constant because it is changing the string, right? And the operator overload for it is exactly the same. The reason I'm copying and pasting to show you that it is identical. How they are overloaded, it doesn't matter if you're reading or writing. It's the same thing. So it's, so it's ISDR left operand, and this one is not a constant C string. Other than that, everything else is the same. Okay? And the implementation of this one is identical to the other one too, which means the other one, you write S display, this does the exact same thing. So let's call this one S, not to, oh, not this one. Uh, so I'm going to call this one ISDR, and this one is, and I'm going to call it S, okay, to just make it simpler. So in here, I'm going to say return S dot uh, read, and I'm going to pass ISDR to it. So it's the same thing, but read is a different story. Read is a completely different story. How do we read it? I want to read a string completely without a limit to its size. I'm not going to implement that today. I'm going to implement with somewhat limit. And it's a challenge for you to actually create the limitless one. So this is the read function that I am implementing in here. Okay? So it's iStream, string read, and iStream ISDR. This is what I'm doing in here. And the reason I'm taking the STD scope resolution out because I'm using a, a STD up there. I don't need it. So I need user to be able to add any size. Okay? I can't do that now. It's, uh, it's going to take too long. Then I have to spend 45 minutes doing it for you over here and maybe another day. Um, or you can come up with it and let me know. But I will guess that the user is not going to more than 40K from keyboard, right? Something like that, which is very wrong. Maybe up, you'll see. Um, so I am, I am going to actually do the read for 4K, which is... Uh, I'm going to create over here a temporary uh, character string local one in the read so it gets created and destroyed. And I'm going to put 40K over there. Sorry, 4K over there, which is uh, 4,096 bytes. OK? And I am going to use iStream get line to read that. So I'm going to say read into temp up to 496. Okay, so it's going to read the value in there, right? Now, if what happens is successful, 
if what happens is successful, it means it's actually not more than 4K. So the limit, you remove this limit and they're going to be priced, okay? You remove this limit and they're going to be priced to see how you can actually do that. It's, it's uh, a, an interesting, uh, interesting thing to do. But anyways, so we do a get line, we receive it, and uh, don't be a smart thing, okay? Don't, please do not use the string class of C++ to implement it. That's just really, okay? Don't do that. I want your C and C++ knowledge for this, not the, the string class of, of, of things. So in here, I'm going to say if I stream is successful, which means actually it read something into that one, uh, the, uh, the very first thing, actually I can just, uh, yeah, if it's I stream is successful, do this. If it's not successful, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to let it work like CN because the person who reads it needs to know if it was successful or not so they can check the success of CN to see after you read what's successful or not. So I'm going to leave it. If it fails, I'm going to let it be in failure mode. It's the person's responsibility who's using our read to clear the CN and do the flushing and all the things like they do it for a regular integer. Okay? So I'm going to say if it didn't fail iStream, then what do I need to do? I need to do the exact same thing that I have done in here. Correct? Oh, wrong button. So I'm going to copy that and bring it down here. There's a reason I'm copying. It's not that only that I'm lazy. The reason that I'm doing that is that to show you that you can change this to a function because it's getting repeated, right? So in here, I'm going to say uh, set the length to uh, the length of the temp, right? And after that, copy the temp in here. And then return uh, ISDR. What is wrong with this function? Logically, it's like if, if I run it, it will work now. If I run it, it will work perfectly. You will see that it actually reads and everything. But there is a problem with this. What is the problem with this class, with this function, with respect to dynamic memory allocation? Yeah, I need to delete it, memory leak, right? I need to delete this. You need to, you, you need to know this. At any moment or time, if you are actually reading, you have to make sure that you delete the thing. Otherwise, so, so in here, before doing anything, I need to say delete uh, M data. Wipe out the M data, and thank you very much. That's 2% for the midterm because of the heroic answer. Okay, so, so delete M data, so the at deletes the data, then updates the length, does a dynamic memory allocation, and copies. Okay, and, uh, and we're done. Uh, so now we are reading. And now I can actually uh, write a program like this. So I'm going to remove these. And in here, I'm going to say, just to, to show you that we can overwrite the name. I'm going to actually put some data in it already. And I'm going to say, uh, what am I going to say? Uh, name. Now I'm going to say C in name. OK? Then I'm going to say C out. Hello name. I don't know why it's a surprise, but I'm doing it. Anyway, so, so when I run the program, now the scene is going to actually work, and it's going to actually wait for me to do uh, uh, the scene over here. So in here, I can say over here, fardat, and it's going to say, hello, fardat, killing string containing fardat, okay? So it created the string with Jack and killed the one with fardat because it overwrote it, okay? Overwrote the thing. Are we okay with this? I'm not going to walk through it, walk through it at home, see how it works. We did dynamic memory allocation several times. For example, for doing, to do examples and stuff like that, uh, um, I need to actually do this. So now that I have done this, uh, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say, uh,
um, name two, and I'm going to set that to John. Okay. So in here, I'm going to say name two is set to name. Okay. Now I'm going to say C out. Hello to name two. Two. Okay? Are we okay? Or let's do it like this. So um, I'm going to make it better. Do I make it better? This is fine enough. This is good. This is good. Okay. So I want, I'm just setting one name to another name. They are identical structures. They are identical classes. I'm allowed to do that. Right? If you have two structures left and right from C, you can set one to another and life is beautiful. Nothing's wrong with that. And if I run it, that actually shows the thing, the, the fact that I can do it. So um, I'm just going to come over here and show you the, the outcome. So when I run this, it's going to create the two things, Jack and John. It's going to get created. And then it's going to get the name, which is going to, I don't know, Fardat. And now it's going to say, hello, Fardat. Now it's going to set name two to name one. So it's going to be hello to Farda two, right? Because it overwrote the other one. Problem happens now when I want to end the program. Ha, it crashes. What went wrong? This is what went wrong. C language is OK when you don't have any classes with resource, the type that the assignment that it does. So the, the blind type of assignment that it does. So how does the assignment work? When you have two objects, okay, so this is the of this is name one. Okay? And this is name two. This one has a pointer and a length. This one has a pointer and has a length, right? When you say name two is set to name one, when you do this, C says two identical structures. I'm going to copy everything from the top to the bottom. So the value of pointer goes over here. The value of length goes over here. And that's beautiful. Nothing wrong with it. But the problem is that name is pointing to, what was the thing? It was Jack or something? So, or John? I don't know what it was. Or, oh, sorry, I did it the other way. Name two. So name two was point. So name one was pointing to, it was, I think, Farnad in there, right? Right? And name two had over here, uh, what was it, John? Right? Correct? So obviously, this is the length 6 over here, and this one had the length 4 over here, correct? Now the assignment happens, so it brings everything from here. It's not aware that there is anything outside. C has no way to know that. The only thing that is cut that gets copied is the big box at the top to the big box at the bottom. Therefore, the content of this variable goes to here. Therefore, this variable will point to the same place that this one points. And, and this connection is lost. So first of all, before anything, even when it works properly, you have memory leak. And the second thing is that that 6 gets copied down over here. So you had 6 over here. The 6 comes over here. Now your program keeps running. It prints the first name. It goes from the, uh, the M data of name 1 to far that and prints it. Beautiful. Then you say print name 2 too. It comes to name 2, goes to the data, and prints it. So you think it's copied. It's not. It's the same value. Problem happens here. When, first of all, you have memory leak. We know that. 
Number two, when the destructor of name two is called, because it, it died, they died in reverse order, right? The destructor of name two is called when name two is dying. It first destroys that, correct? Because it deletes it. Therefore, that is deleted and gone. And then this is deleted, correct? Now the destructor of name one is called. It says delete what? That's when it crashes. Because it says you are deleting an address that doesn't belong to you. That is why we have, and these type of classes, that they own data that are not within their scope of the class when the data is outside. Either you have dynamic memory allocation, or you have some kind of thing out there, like a, a file you have, but whatever, I don't know what you have. Something outside of the class that you are referring to, you need to take care of those when you're copying too, and you have to have a strategy for it. So classes with resources need you to follow what we call the rule of three. Rule of three are creation of three things. Number one, something to take care of copying. This one is not copying. This one is assignment, right? This one was assignment, but it's irrelevant. Even if it's copying, something's going to go wrong, which means if we do copying, it's as bad as this one too which means when you have an object, a class with some data in it, and then you create another one, either assignment at the moment of creation or parentheses in front of it, you know they are exactly the same. It doesn't make any difference. So instead of creating the class and copying the data, it only copies the data inside. Therefore, they both point to the same place. And when one is destroyed, it destroys the data. And the second one, when it's destroyed, it's the destructor crash. With copying, it's not as severe because you don't have memory leak, but still crashes. So when your program runs beautifully and it hits the ground when it ends, that means you didn't do the copying properly. OK? With the assignment, it's almost the same thing. With the assignment, it's almost the same thing. Why? Because with the assignment, but it's even worse than this because you're going to have memory leak too. So with the assignment, you have two classes. One gets assigned to the other one. And when you assign one to another one, you lose the data. That becomes your memory leak. We just drew, drew it over here. And then the destructor crash will happen, right? So how do we fix this? To fix this process, we need to first, we need to first take care of copying, which means we should not let the compiler do the copying for us automatically. How can I take care of the copying? We know we have a constructor, right? And we have a one argument constructor, correct? We created a string, for example, out of a constant character pointer. To prevent bad copying, all I need to do is to create a constructor that accepts at its one, as its one argument another string. So whenever copying is supposed to happen, compiler does it its own way. It does it our way. How do we do it so it actually makes sense and nothing goes wrong? This is how you do good copying. When you have a class that has some kind of a data outside, when copying happens, your copy constructor, we call that a copy constructor, should take over instead of C's copying and measure the size of the data that the other one has and allocate enough memory for it. Then it has to copy every individual data from one to the other one. So everything should get copied. Then it has to update the size too, and then copying is done. And when the destructor is called, each one will destroy its own data, and nothing is wrong, and everything is good.
Are we okay? And with the assignment, it's the same thing. But assignment, because it has an extra thing, because assignment can happen on already existing objects. Copy constructor, you have a fresh, fresh object. It's not pointing to anything, right? You can, you're just building it. But with an assignment, problem is that you already have something in there. It's not a fresh object. So the very first thing that you do when the assignment happens is that you have to get rid of that data fair first. So first you have to get rid of data, and then the rest is exactly like the copy constructor. That is why, because they are exactly the same other than deleting the data, usually what we do when we are actually following rule of three. So rule of three, number one was copy constructor. The second one is copy assignment. You have to overload the assignment for assigning to the same object. We call it the copy assignment. That has to be created. And the destructor. Destructor we already have. We know what DMA is. We have done it. So for this case, only if I do the copy constructor and copy assignment, I'm good to go. How do I do that? For the copy constructor, this is what I'm going to do. So these are, this is the, so in here I'm going to say, I'm going to receive a string. And in here, it's got to be a constant string reference uh, S, OK? If you don't put a reference over here, it becomes chicken and the egg. Which one comes first? Because if you pass it by value, it's going to copy it, right? Because you're passing something by value. But you are doing the copy constructor. So your copy constructor needs a copy constructor. Therefore, chicken and the egg, you know, OK? So it has to be a reference. As a matter of fact, uh, in new C++ compilers, it actually gives you an error. In old ones, it wouldn't. You would just go in an endless uh, function, recursive function call, and uh, your stack would have overflown and it would have crashed. But anyways, so that's the copy construct, and the other one is a copy assignment. A copy assignment is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to say operator assignment, and it's the exact same uh, uh, argument that you have for the other one. So they both copy the same thing. But because we have the exact same logic in them, usually when you are uh, doing your, uh, so do we have a set empty in here? We don't have a set empty, do we? No, we don't have a set empty. I'm going to create a set empty in here, void set empty. Although it is already empty and I don't need to do it, I actually forget it. I'm just going to comment it. So when you are creating a copy constructor, and this is good especially when you're doing tests and stuff because you want to be quick, when you are creating a copy constructor, all you need to do is to make sure that deleting the current data won't cause a crash, which means you have to make sure that the pointer is null in here, in the copy construct, in the constructor. The pointer, if we, if we actually initialize it in the class, we are good to go. But if you don't, all I'm going to say is that when you are actually developing a copy constructor, first thing is that make sure the data, the, uh, the, 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 the DMA data, Data is uh, data pointer is null, and then after that, all you need to do is to say operator. Seriously, I don't have those. Operator equal, and I'm gonna pass. Why did I call it C over there? I meant S. Okay, and you call the operator because they are identical things. The, the only difference with, between operator equal and copy construction was that this deletes the data first, right? And because you make sure that the data is null, that deletion will do, won't do anything. Therefore, you can use your reuse your thing. The only thing you need to do is to actually implement the, the assignment operator, OK? So we're going to do that. Do we understand this? OK, before even we, we know how we are doing the, 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 the assignment, the copy construction is simply a use of assignment. So if in a test or something, I don't explicitly tell you not to use the assignment operator or something like that and do that, you simply reuse it and you're done with it. OK? 
So now that we are done with this, let's take a look at the, the, the assignment operator overload. To do the assignment operator overload, the very first thing what we do, obviously, is deleting the data, right? First, we delete the data. The data is gone. And then, ta-da. So now in here, I'm going to say u, not u, s.len, like the other one. I think I had it somewhere. s.length, right? And in here is going to be s.length. And SDR copy from s.mdata to that one. As you see, the logics are identical. Please change them to a function. OK? Or I'll do it later on. But uh, try to change them to a function. So actually, um, I did it in the other class. So it's a better idea to actually have a, a function created in the utilities to do that for you to do your allocation and copying, because you're going to do that over and over and over and over and over and over till the end of the semester, like 500 times. So uh, I would have a function in the utils to take care of that so I don't have to rewrite the code over and over. But anyways, so and then at the end, I'm going to return this, obviously. So this looks like a, a, a good thing that I have written, but uh, there are a few things in here that I need to make sure that actually uh, is set. First of all, I need to see if this thing is empty or not. If it's empty, this operation, this is going to be 0, and, but, and this is going to be 1, and then this is going to fail, right? So if this thing is empty, it shouldn't do anything, correct? So if that's the case, what I need to do over here is to put that into an if statement. So if s exists, do this. The problem is that. If I do such a thing, then deleting the data will, will, will leave the data with garbage in it. Therefore, we follow the rule, as I mentioned. You delete something, you make sure the value of the pointer is null, OK? Because you don't know what's going to happen next. So in here, mdata should be null PTR. So that took care of that. So it first deletes the data, sets to null PTR, and obviously, I'm sorry, uh, that's why I wanted to have set empty over there. And m length will be set to 0. So it would be nice if I actually have, if I actually have a set empty in here. So I'm going to say void set empty, something like that. And this set empty of mine set empty of mine will actually do the exact same thing I, I mentioned over there which is, oh, not that. Where did I put it? So now in here, I'm going to say uh, delete it and set to empty. OK? So it puts it in empty set empty state. So, so uh, I can reuse it later on if I want to. So that seems to be good. So we are OK. But there is one more thing that we have to take care of when we are doing an assignment. Either for unknown circumstances that we don't know yet, or user stupidity, we need to take care of these type of scenarios. That is, That's a very valid statement, right? So it gets the right name and copies it on name. That result in C language, by definition, is that no change happens to name, correct? It remains the same. But in our case, the assignment would delete the data on name and then try to copy that over there, which is not going to work, right? So it either causes a crash, or in best case scenario, it nullifies and empties the name, which we don't want to. Therefore, in our standard implementation of a, 
assignment, copy assignment overload, we always have to check, am I copying me? How do I do that? First of all, I know what is address of me. Where is address of me? It's in this, correct? So I'm going to say if this is not equal to the address of S, do these things. Because if it's me, our addresses are going to be the same, right? So all these things will happen only if we are different objects. If it's the same object, it just returns the reference of uh, nothing. Nothing happens. So it co completely ignores it. Now, if I run the program, you will see that it actually works with no crashing because the assignment is actually done properly like that. So if I say over here, fardad, it works and everything is good. As, see, as you see, both destructors are called and nothing crashed, which means they have their own memory now. Not only that, I can do something like this even. Uh, where's my CPP? I can actually have something like this. Uh, void greet. And in here is string uh, const string reference name. And in here, I'm going to say, oh, not even reference. Let's actually do it bad. So I'm going to actually put something like this. Now in here, I'm going to say, uh, let's see out. In here, I'm going to say, uh, hello, name. Have a good day. OK? And then I go to new line. So that looks like a very OK function. But the thing is that, let me just, uh, before doing that, I'm going to say b copy assign main.cpp. So that's copy assignment. That's we, the copy constructor is not called there at all because it's just assignment happening. But now, if I actually do something like this, it looks very har uh, harmless to actually say over here, greet name. Right? But when you do something like that, and in here I'm going to say uh, name is going to leave just to differentiate what's happening in here. So when the program runs, and I, still the debugging is on. So if I actually look at the sequence of things happening now, this is what happened. So first it creates a string out of Jack. Then it goes to, so, hello, Jack, have a good day. Wait a minute, what happened in here? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> my apologies. Excuse me, bother me, I forgot something. I forgot to actually put something over there to tell us that it's being copied. So I'm going to come to copy thingy. Where is my copy? There you go. So in here, I'm going to say uh, copying. Copying this into a new string. It actually, did I? Am I missing something here? Oh. So, and that's not C string, that's uh, actually, I can put over here. S, and I'm going to say S. OK, that's going to work too. Yeah. Oh, no, I can. I can, because it's going <laughs> to cast this nothing to a string. You know, for the conditional expression over here, the types of false and true must be identical. But this type is a string. This type is a constant character pointer. So compiler will cast this to a string. Yuck. So uh, I'm, 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 j I'm just going to, to make that not happen, I'm going to bite the bullet and put and that, and that over there. So if it is valid, show it. Otherwise, show nothing.
So now it's good. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so now if I run the program one more time and come back over here, now I can actually say, see what happens over here. So, so first it creates a string out of Jack. That's number nine. Now function greet is called. When function greet is called, we know function calls are like this. So when the function calls, it calls greet. I'm misspelling greet, am I? It's G-R-E. Is it correct? Yeah, okay. String. Sorry, English is fourth language. Okay. Name is set to, uh, let me just change this name over here to, uh, I'm going to put over here uh, the name. The reason I'm changing the name over here is to, uh, so my example is, uh, is easily um, uh, describable. So the name will be equal to name. So when the function is called, this is what happens behind the scene. So essentially when the function is called, the argument of the function is set to the value of the argument. That's what happens. Therefore, you have assignment at the moment of creation, therefore copy constructor. That's what happens. Anytime you pass anything by value, this happened, ever. Okay? That's why when you pass it with a reference, life is beautiful, because then it becomes a reference of a new thing, and therefore nothing gets created, right? So now if I actually look at what happens over here is this. So first it creates a string out of jack. That's number, line number nine. Then it goes to function greet, and it's going to say copying jack into a new string that is the name. Then it says, hello, Jack, have a good day. That's the copy that is being printed. And as soon as the name goes out of scope, out of greeting, killing the string containing Jack, which is the name dying, because greeting is over. And now it comes over here, says Jack is going to leave, and that's when the Jack in main will die. And what, what happens is that you don't see these things happening, really. So if I take the debug off, it, in an object-oriented language, if I actually uh, set the debugging off, all you see is this. And you say, what a cute program. You don't know that behind the scene, two objects got created, dynamic memory action, copying, all those things happening behind the scene. Okay? That's something that you need to appreciate. Okay? That's number one. Are we okay with this? Number two. Let's say I want to get the name. So in here, I'm going to say string get name. And in here, I'm going to say string name. And I'm going to say see out name. And I'm going to get the name, see in name. And I'll return the name. We have done this 55,000 times with integers and stuff, right? So what, what happens really behind the scene is this. So instead of saying name is Jack, I'm going to say name is it, name. I'm going to say name. Then I'm going to say name is set to get name. Looks very innocent and nice, right? If I run the program, the process is this. Just take a look. I'm going to remove the debugging. I'm going to remove the debugging, and you're going to see hell is going to break loose. So when I run it, So it's actually, first of all, it's going to say creating a string out of nothing. That's, that's number one. That's this name getting created. Ah, oh, shoot. Stop. Let me just stop. Give me a second. Uh, or uh, I think it's uh, plain execution. So uh, I'm going to uh, change this to name, the name. So when I say, I, I want to name it and it'd be different. So now, the first one is line number 15, creating name. The second one is get name being called. Okay? Therefore, goes into get name, creates the name out of nothing. Now it's going to read it in CN. So in here, I'm going to say Jack. Right? And see what's going to happen. So, 
it reads and now it wants to return the name Jack out. Okay? I want to give this marker to this lady. But imagine there is an invisible line in here and I'm not allowed to pass this marker to the other side. And she's not allowed to pass her hand behind this. How am I supposed to pass this out? The only way is to make a double copy and give the copy to her. So this can go with garbage. And she's going to have a copy. That's how things are returned. Because the name scope is within line 8 and 13, when the name is returned, it has to die. I cannot return something out that is just dead. All the information is gone. The destructor is called. It's gone. Therefore, a double copy, nameless copy, will be actually passed out from here and sent out. So this name will get copied. That's when you see over here. So, so in here it says killing Jack. Then it says copying Jack into a new string. That's when Jack is actually being returned. Okay? And then when it's returned, it goes to the assignment operator. Assignment operator receives the thing with a string, with a, with a reference, right? So in the assignment operator here, in the assignment operator here, S will be the reference of that nameless thing. S will be the name, uh, uh, the uh, reference of a nameless, nameless thing. And then it's going to delete the current data, set it to empty, do everything, and set the left operand, that is name, to Jack. And after that is done, it's going to kill the Jack. Killing string containing Jack. And then it's going to leave and yada, yada, yada. So it's crazy. Returning a value, returning by value causes a copy, receiving by value causes a copy. So you have to be careful about that. Try to, as long as you can, try to pass values by reference, return values by reference, if you can. That saves humongous amount of time and memory. We didn't know that in C. We just receive by value, pass by value. Works. The answer of the ship, but it works. No, it doesn't. It is actually uh, killing lots of time. And that's that. Okay, so classes with resource are done. So rule of three, at any moment you have a class that has data outside of its own scope, you are required to implement rule of three. Copy construction, copy assignment, and destructor. So rule of three, if I ask you what rule of three are, copy constructor, copy assignment, and destructor. You have to create those three. Are we okay with this? All right. Remember, one thing I have to mention to you that is extremely important before we leave, is that I can say over here, greet name. So what happens over here from what we know, this is a constructor that happens over here, and another constructor happens over here, that the destructor happens over here, copy constructor happens for the nameless, nameless goes to the assignment operator, Name will assume the name, then that is going to die. That nameless is going to die. Then, again, name is going to get copied in here. Then that's going to get greet. That's going to die. 
and comes out, that name is, that name is going to die, right? What I'm saying is that a nameless object never gets copied because compiler thinks it's a name waste of time. A nameless object, cop, object always, so the argument will always assume identity of it, which means in here, get name is returning a nameless, correct? Because it's copying the name. And that is directly passed by value to the name, correct? Compiler says, you are already giving me that is something that is nameless. It's a temporary object. Why do I need to copy it? I'm just going to call it the name and use it. So remember that. Try this and you'll see. So I'm going to actually... Do it like this. So this is uh, C return copy construction, copy construction, pass by value and return, <laughs> return by value. Okay. Value dot CPP. Okay. Um, but what I want to also put over here for you to, to investigate later on, that if I say greet over here and I pass it like that, in here I'm going to say uh, temp objects never yet copied. And that's going to be D temp objects no copy. Activate debug and take a look at it and see how it works. Okay? Which and now it brings it brings us to the last thing that we're going to talk about today. And then we're gonna so I'm going to comment this. I don't want any debugging statements anymore. And, uh, and um, you know that I let you go early in this class. That's why I'm not giving you a break. So you're going to have to. Anyways. So the class ends at 11.35, correct? All right. We have plenty of time. OK, so. So, let's talk about the input-output system in C++. C++ works like this. So, at the top, we have this master class that all the basic input-output values and procedures and things that needs to be done, they're implemented in that class. That class is called iOS. That's the one that you use iOS fixed, iOS left, iOS right. Those are the ones that all the basic stuff about iOS is kept in. Then that class is inherited into two classes. The two classes are iStream and we have O stream. I stream and O stream are designed to work with console. And because console is a unique thing, you have one terminal, you have one keyboard. You don't have five keyboards and three terminals at the same time. Okay? So because of that fact, they made the constructors of I stream and O stream private, which means you cannot instantiate them. And somehow, magically, that you're going to learn later on, they instantiated these objects, these classes, into global objects that you call C in. So C in is essentially a, an object of type I stream and C out, C log, and C error. Three objects out of that one. Okay? 
So these are the objects you have when you include I.O. stream. And the definition of all these things The definition of all these things is in IO stream header file, where you include it. Are we okay with this? Then they said, that's pretty good. So why don't we just continue? So they said, we are going to inherit a class out of iStream, and we call that one I. F stream and we call this one OF stream to read and write from and into files. So they are the same objects, just their target is a file. Now are files unique on hard drives? No, you can have 50 files on a hard drive, 5 million files on a hard drive. Each one has a different name, right? Because of that, the constructors of IFStream and OFStream are not private. You can actually build instances of them for each separate file. If you would have created a constructor for a file class, what would you pass as the value for the argument of the constructor? file name, right? <laughs> that just makes sense, correct? That's what it is. So the constructor of IF stream receives a file name. If you would have created that one, would you have opened the file in a constructor? Yes, that's what it does. As soon as it's constructed, the file gets opened. If you would have created that one in a destructor, you would have closed the file, right? That's what they do. So when the object is over, it closes the file. So you just create the object for the file, and you treat it exactly as how you did with CIN. That's for iStream. You create a file out of the object OF stream, and you treat it as C out, exactly how you did on C out. No difference. Everything works identical. OK? And they did, they went even further. They said, OK, you can write from a keyboard, and you can write on a terminal, but you don't do any ever reverse, right? But in a file, you can write into a file and can read from the same file, correct? So they actually did that. They say, let's have a multiple inheritance out of these two guys and create a, a class called fstream. And the green marker of mine is not working properly for a reason. We are not going to deal with that this semester. <laughs> OK? Only I stream, IF stream and OF stream. We're not going to do it for the same time. That's next semester when we are doing random access. We are not doing random access. We're just reading. We are writing, not both at the same time. OK? So IF stream and OF stream. And the, where is where all this is kept in? So all this is kept in a header file called fstream. OK, so if you include that one, you're good to go. Let's try it. So what I'm saying is, in here I'm including fstream. And in here I'm going to say iofstream. Oh, my name. And in here, I'm going to call it the name, .txt. Then I'm going to say, my, my name file is a child of cout, right? So I can simply say, my name for that. And go to new line. Go to new line. Then in with of, so I'm going to say my name dot with, in with of, because C out has with, right? In with of 40 characters, fill uh, 
my name dot fill uh, with a dot and my name dot write just so uh, how do we do write just a set f right ios right correct now i'm going to say my name again Suleiman Lu. I'm just teaching you how my name is written. Okay, and then I run the program. Program runs, compiles, and poof. The output of the program is nothing. Why? Because it wrote it in a file. If I take a look at it, in here I'm going to have the name, and if I open the name, that's for that Suleiman Lu. Ta da! We okay with this? Now, although it opens and closes it, as you see over here, okay, you can open and close. There is a function actually for it. You can actually say my name dot open and put the file name in there if you want to. Nothing wrong with that. And if you want to close it, you can. So I could, if I want to do something with that file, obviously I have to close it and then do something to that file. So in here, I can actually say my name dot close. You can do that, no problem. If you don't, it's going to close it in the destructor. Don't worry. But if you want to close it earlier, you can do that. Now I'm going to close that one. Now I'm going to say if stream the name or name, and I'm going to call it the name again, .txt, the file that I just created. And remember, every time you do it, if you put the same name, it overwrites the old one. There are ways to go beyond that. You can tell it to write after. You can say append right in the middle. You can do all that. We're not going there. That's beyond our scope. We are just learning to write and read from a file and be done with it. Those things I'll explain later. But this is what we need to know. Now in here, if I say, for example, if I have character ch, and I say cn, oh, sorry, name ch, and I say c out ch, what's going to get printed? Having the fact that this is the file. Where is it? So this is the file, and that's my code. What's, what is the output of the following program? Remember, name is cn. Works exactly like that. Hmm? No. What, what do you say? You said f? Yeah, f. It's f. It reads one character. <laughs> Right? It reads one character. That's how CN works, right? The good thing about reading from a file that you don't have the stupid user to make mistake. You know what the input is. So you know what the format of the file is. You don't need to ask the user, oh, that's wrong, enter it again. You keep reading and you always check the status of name as you do for CN. So if it fails, you simply tell them, hey, the file has a bad format, fix it. You could be kind enough to tell them what was the last record you read, so they fix it. As simple as that. So now, for example, I can do this. In here I can say, I can say, what do I say? I can say, I can say, name.getLine, and let's have character str over here, I don't know, 50. Okay, get line into uh, SDR and up to 50 characters. So in here, I'm going to say if name, because that's what C in does, right? You can put C in. Now I'm going to say C out SDR. So what is the output of line 22? R dot. So if I run the program now, as you see, 
the first one is going to have an F, and the other one's going to read R dot because it reads the F, then it reads everything up to new line. Exactly the same way as keyboard. No difference. So now I can do this. I can say, I can say, uh, name dot ignore a thousand up to s and then I'm gonna say again uh, and uh, it's just that if statement I just put it for I don't know anyway so um, I'm gonna do that again so in here I'm gonna do a name uh, I'm gonna say over here name dot uh, get line again into SDR and 50 and do the exact same thing again. So what is the output of line 27 now? No, it doesn't print solely because it says up to up to S. So S will be ignored too. So it's going to print Ole Mandu, <laughs> right? So now if I run it, so again, it is, it is exactly what CN does. You know it. You've done it already with CN in very critical way, writing foolproof things for users. It doesn't make any difference. You can do it with files. Done. That's files. I told you it's going to take five minutes, and I keep my promise. It's not, it's not something difficult to actually work with seriously. Um, that's what we need to know down to this point. Nothing important. And you know what is interesting about it? Let me show you something. So th this feature, I'm going to write. So in here, I'm going to say file. I'm going to say uh, it's A, B, C, D, E, file. Let me show you something that is really amazing. It's a beautiful thing. So actually, let's, let's have my name created over here. See what I'm going to do? String name. See out. Please enter your name. I'm going to go see. Uh, I'm going to go see in into name, right? We did that for string, right? We just did that for our string, correct? Now look what I'm going to do. I'm going to say my name, and I'm going to put the string thingy in it. Did you design your string to work with files? No. You wanted for a string. You did O stream. You didn't do O F stream, did you? It was O stream, correct? Take a look. Homer Simpson. It worked. How the devil that worked? I didn't write any file thingy. The thing is that my name is Fardad, right? If you call me Mr. Solimandu, I would say you're crazy, but you can, right? You can call me Mr. Solimandu with my family name, with my father's name, right? It will still work, right? It's the same thing for OF stream, because OF stream is a child of O stream, you can call it with O stream's name. It will still work. So the O stream reference, it has to be a reference. You can call OF stream with a reference of its parent. That is O stream. And it still act like a file. And that's a beautiful thing about, that's ultimate polymorphism where the objects act in different ways based on their type without changing any code. You literally pass a file to a C out, to what C out used to be, but because C out is the parent of the file, they designed it in a way so it actually acts like a file after that. So you don't need to override anything. 
You just work it like that and it works. The only thing is that you need to follow, you need, you should have followed my advice when I told you when you create a display, make sure all stream flows through your display. Remember I told you that? If in here you use C out to print the data, your code would have worked for, for screen, but it, would have had, it wouldn't have had written it in a file. Because now you are using that reference, and that reference in that display is actually the file my name. O stream is the file. And you are saying file, write that into the file. So it reads, writes it in the file. That's why C in and C out. So I can actually now close that. Just to show you to the extreme, I can actually close that. And I can say, what do I say? What do I say? What do I say? I can say uh, my name, duh, close. Now I'm going to say if stream stream file and I'm going to call it the name dot txt and in here oh that close has to be okay now in here I can actually say file into name read the file into the name how did we do that file reading in here. How did we do our C in in here? C in says ISTR get line. So whatever you have over there up to new line will be read from a file. And because we did it, because we printed it with a new line after, it's going to read it. Otherwise, it's going to crash. Not crash. File is going to fail. And we can always test it. We can always say over here, Give file exactly like we do for C in. C out the name in file is name. And actually, you know what? Just to prove that that's another name in here, I'm going to put uh, uh, N. So in here, I'm going to actually put N it's to show you that it's not the same thing. It is actually another variable that is read from a file. And so now if I run the program and I write over here Homer Simpson, you will see that the file is, the name of the file is Homer Simpson. It actually reads it from there because C in is flowing. The I stream is flowing through read and therefore it's upgradable. Are we good? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? There you go. That's the end of the file. And that's going to be your workshop, actually. In your workshop, I'm going to do something like that. So uh, I, I'm going to ask you to overload stuff and do all the good things with the display. Then I'm going to use that display to read and write from a file to see if you actually did create your displays properly passing through and you didn't use C out instead and use O stream. Anyways, have a beautiful day. And uh, I'm going to push these right into the repository. Which one? The DIY? Uh, well, I'll fix it. Part one? Oh, okay, it's part. I thought I updated it. Uh, for all the profs, I send it for Wednesday, then I update my own. So I'm going to go fix it. Thank you for letting me know. I'll update it. It's got to be okay. No problem. See you.